Welcome to the second episode of this season's new series on the surnames of Appalachia and the American South. As with the first season, I want to focus on surnames that have been in the country since before the Civil War. As a reminder, the Industrial Revolution in America began in earnest during the Civil War and the Reconstruction. That would be from around 1861 to about 1900. The economic explosion that resulted from the expansion of factories and the construction of railroads attracted millions of people to the United States. Since a person my age would most likely know the names of double great-grandparents who arrived in an American port of entry during that time, there's little need for my work to help them. So, today on The Vantage Point, we will venture back a couple of centuries to see the origins and meanings of six more pre-Civil War family names of Appalachia and the American South. I hope you'll join me. Number one, Pinson. The origin of surnames is an interesting study in and of itself. Sometimes it's possible to accurately guess where a name originated due to its sound and suffixes. In the case of Pinson, I would have thought it was an Anglo-Saxon name from the medieval days, but that's not the case. Like many other names in about 10,000 words in the English language, we must look to the French-speaking Normans for the origin and early meaning of Pinson. It's a variant of Pinchon, which was derived from an old French personal name, Pinson, which meant Finch. That's right. The original bearers of the surname were either bright and cheerful people, or they whistled or sang like a bird of Finch. A look at the traditional names among the Scots, Irish, and Welsh failed to find Pinson, so I'm highly confident that Pinson is an English rendering of a French personal name. Number two, Butterworth. <laughs> One of my favorite meals is a plate of blueberry pancakes from Cracker Barrel. I must admit that I'm a pancake snob because I prefer pure maple syrup. But when I can't coat my cakes in maple syrup, I opt for Mrs. Butterworth's sweet liquid. This is a not a paid commercial, by the way, for the restaurant or Mrs. Butterworth's. It just sweetly ties into them. The surname Butterworth originated in the lush green fields of Lancashire, England. It was derived from an enclosure where dairy cows or goats were kept, and their milk, of course, was used to churn butter. Just like Pinson, this surname appears to have come straight to America without leaving a significant presence among the traditional surnames of Ireland, Scotland, or Wales. I'm confident that Mrs. Butter oh, excuse me, <laughs> Butterworth is an English surname, and Mrs. Butterworth is an adequate and occasional substitute for pure maple syrup. Number three, Braden. Braden, Braden, Braden. <laughs> I've lived among Braden folk for much of my adult life. It's interesting that two of the most important women in my life that were not related to me had mothers or grandmothers named Braden. My connection with the Braden family doesn't end there. I live less than four miles small community of Braden's Chapel. I'm also the uncle of a tall, lanky basketball player named Braden Lane. He was named after his great-grandmother's Braden family who lived in Braden's Chapel. I tell you this because I had better get this name right. George uh, Fraser Black says that the Scottish form probably originated in Ireland as... Further research tells me that the various forms of Braden are most likely from Ireland, specifically Fermanagh and Tyrone. However, Braden first appears in the Scottish records in 1629 when two Bradens were charged with opposing a new form of tanning. <laughs> For the younger folks out there, that kind of tanning didn't require copper tone or banana boat lotions. It was about tanning the hides of animals to make leather. <laughs> there was also an Anglo-Norman family named Braden that lived in Leinster, Ireland, but it's distinct from the rest of the Bradens. At the end of the day, I'm confident that Braden in the south and Appalachia is either a Scottish or Irish surname. Number four, Marion. As with many personal names, the Bible served as a bountiful source for surnames. The, you might recall that Moses and Aaron had a sister named Miriam, which I believe is the ultimate source for Marion. She's remembered for saving baby Moses, if you remember from the Bible. Later, the French and the English adopted the name. In England, it's sometimes used in lieu of Marjorie. Before you think that Marion is exclusively a woman's name, you might note that John Wayne's real name was Marion Robert Morrison. That's right, Marion Robert Morrison. At any rate, the surname Marion was introduced into Great Britain by the Normans. As with other names today, Marion doesn't show up among the traditional surnames of Ireland and Scotland or Wales. 
So, I think we're safe in calling Marion an Anglo-Norman surname. Number five, Poteet. When I received this request, my mind went straight to the sports teams at Lincoln Memorial University, LMU, it's in Harrogate, Tennessee, and Northeastern Oklahoma A&M College, NEOANM, in Ottawa County, Oklahoma. Charlie Poteet was a longtime tennis coach at LMU, and there was a Poteet that played football for the NEO Norseman back at the turn of the century. That's year 2000. Gosh, that sounds like a long time ago, doesn't it? Anyway, in research on the name, uh, I found that it's derived from a rare Italian name that shows up in English records in the 1660s. The name was then spelled Potito. Potito. It sounds sort of Italiano. <laughs> the English often dropped the last letters of Latin-based names. My last name received the same treatment. It was V-A-N-N-E-S from a city or a town, I should call it, in Brittany, France, called uh, Van. It's called Van, but uh, they didn't pronounce the E and the S. So the English said, uh, forget about that. We'll just take that E and the S off of there. If we take the uh, sound off potito, or I should say the O sound off potito, we have potite. It's not a particularly common name in Britain today, though. It's not even listed in Henry Harrison's book. I found it in the Dictionary of American Family Names. Here's some information on its original spelling or meaning. Petito was derived from Latin potitus. Now, potitus was a 15-year-old Christian martyr from what is today Bulgaria. He was killed in 160 A.D. At any rate, Poteet is not found among the traditional names of any country besides England and the USA, and it's not even really common here or there. So I'm confident that it's an anglicized or Americanized <laughs> Italian surname. Number six, Harrelson. Harrelson or Haroldson or Haroldson. It just get, goes on and on and on. Phonics works for me, though. One of my favorite... Uh, movies of all time is Zombieland. It's a silly but fun comedy that stars Jesse Eisenberg, Emma Stone, Abigail Breslin, and Woody Harrelson. The story starts in Texas, which is handy because that's where Woody was born and raised. Speaking of Texas and Woody, did you know that his father, Charles Harrelson, was a convicted contract killer and a suspect in one of the more popular JFK assassination conspiracy theories? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Here's another seeming connection to JFK's assassination. Woody's mom is Diane Lou Oswald, but there are no claims of her family being related to the convicted assassin, Lee Harvey Oswald, JFK's alleged killer, convicted killer, I should say. At any rate, I'm confident that Harrelson is an Americanized form of a Scottish-Norwegian name for the son of Harold. Remember, the Vikings contributed many names to Great Britain, and Harold and Haraldson are not unique in that regard. I suspect that the name most likely came to America from Scotland, where it has been in the Orkney records since 1434. That's quite a while back. Well, folks, that's about all I have for you today. I'm glad you joined me. I hope you enjoyed uh, the discussion, and will join us again here on The Vantage Point. God bless you and yours. Bye-bye.